Guys, we got to talk about this Bitcoin all-time high, man, because if you guys have been a follower of the channel, you know that I entered a swing long position down here at around 63K targeting the all-time high, and it's taken a little bit longer than I've expected it to take. And we definitely need to be talking about these boxes here, which I'm going to get into just now in a minute here. But before we do that, if you're a foreigner to the channel, just know that the number one rule when it comes to market cipher B, which is this indicator here on the bottom, is the thicker the money flow, the more chances of divergences. And if you can see locally here, we have very thick money flow and we do not have any divergences. So already our bias should be taking the all-time high, which is why we entered that long position down here expecting a new all-time high. Okay, so the thicker the money flow, the more chances of divergences. Keep that in mind. Now, I want to talk about all of these levels, okay? All of these yellow zones in real time were real zones that I was giving on my channel and in my VIP Discord for potential trade opportunities. And these zones are essentially order blocks, okay? They are valid order blocks that have imbalances and have been calculated. And each one of them have given us a decent sized move okay ever since we put in our all-time high back in march of 2024 march 14th here we've um had somewhat of a decent move to the downside and each one of our order blocks are producing us a significant move so you can see this order block here gave us give or take a 12 percent move to the downside a pretty large move this order block here gave us a eight percent move to the downside this guy gave us a 9% move to the downside, and this current one that we have here gave us about a 7% move to the downside. So these order blocks are absolutely respected, and if you don't know what order blocks are, it is essentially smart money, okay? It is larger institutions that are protecting their short positions, and we are currently in the most recent order block that I've been talking about on my live streams every single day which is the last order block pre all time high. Now I've been mentioning that this order block is not super significant of an order block just because we have the all time high just above us. And it is possible that I mean, it's very likely that we're going to take the all time high at this rate, especially because of the first thing that I said in this video, which is the thicker the money flow, the more chances of divergences. So the reason I have these order blocks here illustrated, and these have all been mitigated now is to show you that in the first half of this range, okay, if I were to draw a square here, you can see very clearly that Bitcoin is simply just ranging, okay, there's nothing really more going on than just us being in a giga macro range. And in the first half of our range, we'll call it somewhere like here, you can see that the moves actually produced us significant moves to the downside, it's more significant than we have now. But more importantly than that, not only did they give us strong moves to the downside, but they broke structure. Okay, so if we were following structure on the way down from all of these order blocks, you can see we we're making lower lows and lower highs. However, it was at this point here where we flipped bullish market structure on the four hour time frame. And that was the point where I was saying, okay, order flow objective to me looks like we are going to make our way up to the high and claim the all time highs. But we needed to keep our eye out on these two zones right here. And both of them have played out perfectly. But these two order blocks are a little bit different than these two order blocks. And I'll tell you why. The reason they are different is, as I mentioned, these guys broke swing structure to the downside. These ones have not done so. This is our significant low that we need to break, basically the exact same level that I'm swing long from, in order to truly flip bearish on these higher term time frames once again. However, you can see that despite price really trying to break through and not being able to do so, we didn't really actually get a strong move to the downside. All we did was come down to mitigate order blocks here on the lows to then continue our move to the upside. So this guy we can delete now because we knew that we were watching him. And now we are currently in this area right now. But look at what happened once again. Yesterday, we had CPI data or whatever the news, I don't follow the news, but we had some news that we were supposed to be following. And although we had a decent retracement from this very last order block, which we were watching for, you can see that right away, we flipped structure back to bullish again. So yesterday's fake out was exactly a fake out. And by the way, guys, yesterday, I believe at 9am, 10am EST, my time, I was posting my thumbnail to go live later on in the day. And I actually posted at around this price here, um, that this was going to be a fake out. So make sure you hit the like button. If you like the content, make sure you hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. So you don't miss my timely updates like this one. But the reason I'm going into depth into what's going on right now is you can see that this order block that we had prior and this current one right now 
is not really giving us that clear conviction move to the downside the way that these first two did. And if they are, and we break, for example, two hour structure like we arguably did here, well, we're flipping back to bullish right away. So it's not really the best sign for shorts right now to be targeting these lower prices. Now, don't get me wrong. I very much so believe that we are overextended. And I do think that we are going to have a strong move to the downside relatively soon. I think we are well overdue for a correction. But based on the number one rule when it comes to market cipher, the thicker the money flow, the more chances of divergences, this is suggesting that we are going to take the high one last time. Now, good confluence with us potentially taking the high one more time is um, illustrated here on the weekly time frame. Okay, we're going to zoom out a little bit. And I want to go over the last cycle two highs that we had. Okay, we had one high here. Here, and we had one high here. Obviously, I'm sure nobody can forget those. These highs in the moment look a lot different than the ones that we had. Look at how we had a large stopping volume candle on the weekly time frame before getting the shift down, the back test, and then the continuation move to the downside. Similarly here, right? We had a nice white wick to the highs before ripping price down eventually. Now, currently where we are, we had the opportunity to have something like this. However, Due to our ETF news and now the halving coming up and the cycle being broken, you can see that there was a lot of buying pressure at the lows. So while on this wick right over here, we could have easily just continued down and had this be a stopping volume candle and have this be a very strong um, local high for the next couple months. Price action and news said, nah, we're going to keep the price up. And so here we are today, which is once again giving us the clue that we might be taking the high here one last time. All right. So now we know that we could probably be taking the high again. And I am targeting the high one last time. And there are two things potentially that can happen once we take the all time high. So let's remove this line. Let's remove our order block. And let's just assume for now that we're going to actually take the high. There are two things that could happen. Either A, we SFP, which is a liquidity grab. We do something like this, in which case I will absolutely be targeting the range low here, potentially even lower towards 59K. And if we start closing significant candles below 59K, oh baby, this thing is going to retrace Mark my words. The next thing I would be looking for if we break the high would be to actually range above. And we will be trading this range just as we are trading this range. However, our bias will be a little bit more to the downside if Bitcoin decides to consolidate right above the high. If we get once again a lack of commitment for the longs to push price significantly higher and we start to range here, it's not actually the most bullish thing. Okay, why is it not bullish? Because we would have our range. We would have our manipulative range just above us. And then we would have our potential expansion to the downside. So you can see that both scenarios, whether it's an SFP or whether we range above the all-time high here for a couple weeks, both of my scenarios are actually bearish because once again, I do believe we are very overextended here on uh, the daily time frame, on the weekly time frame, on the monthly frame, time frame, I do very much so believe that we are due for a significant pullback. And if you know the saying, sell in May, walk away, well, that is absolutely the case in my opinion here. So I believe in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna come and take the all time high. We're either gonna SFP it or we're gonna range above it. And I will be looking for giga shorts at these highs okay because market side for b you can see we're getting the divergences if we get that and we would be having divergences over time with money flow as well we do have the red dot on the weekly time frame that can significantly bring us to the lows and sorry for those who may not want to hear it but we also have divergences on the weekly time frame from the last bull market up until now okay so we know very well that we are just going to be trading the range for what it is we know very well that we could be taking the high and if we do i will be absolutely looking for giga shorts and guys this thing can get very ugly very quickly okay i want to remind you how overextended we are and i believe that if we start to lose this low we will absolutely make our way down with ease might i add to the 53k zone if not much, much lower. If you've been following the channel, then you know that I've been talking about this liquidity that is fairly ugly. And right now, to me, the price action looks very strong for a black swan event to just come and take everybody off guard. And so what might happen is we might start to lose these lows. We might come significantly lower. If we end up losing 53K, in my opinion, we're going to be making our way down to perhaps 
the low uh, 40s or high 30s. And if we lose that, that to me, when price action is right here, to me is the perfect opportunity for the black swan event to come and hit us, potentially bouncing off of this range-based order block. Okay, it's a very large range, but you understand that the idea here to potentially hit 30K. And then that is where the bull market begins or not begins, but continues. Because remember, even in the healthiest bull markets, we are due for large retracements. We have not had a large retracement whatsoever in the slightest because our news-based information having and everything else have been the narrative that have been keeping the price up, but nothing moves up forever. And a large correction, in my opinion, is coming soon. And so this is what I think is the truth about the all-time high i actually don't think us taking the all-time high is that bullish and um, it's for reasons like this one other thing i want to add if we start to range above here or sfp it regardless without making a significant pullback first you can see that we actually have very easy liquidity to grab here so what i prefer in this moment is actually to come and take the high and then keep all this liquidity intact because this will give us a much easier and a much stronger move, a much faster move to the downside and we can make a lot of money on that day. The only way that it would be rather very bullish is if we have a like a very high breakout, let's just say above like $78,000. Like I don't, I wanna see, cause remember I'm anticipating this to be a range potentially. I wanna see this idea of ranging here negated completely. And the only way to do that is if we blast off. If you like the content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Again, if you wanted to join the Discord, the link is in the description down below and I will see you on the next live stream.